We thought we knew orcas. For decades, they've captivated us black and white sea wolves, gliding through oceans with grace and power. The tragic story makes you wonder what we're doing confining these majestic and clearly very dangerous creatures. But here's the twist. We were only seeing part of the story. Because they just discovered a new type of orca, and it's unlike anything ever seen. This isn't just about new behavior or an interesting quirk. This is truly one of the most amazing encounters any of us have witnessed in the wild. It's a revelation that's forcing scientists to redraw the lines between species. What if the ocean's most iconic predator has been hiding an evolutionary secret right in front of us? Let's dive in. Because the truth about these orcas is wilder than fiction. For the longest time, the ocean's apex predator wore a mask of simplicity. The orca, black and white, sleek, intelligent, was cataloged under a single name, Orcanus orca. It didn't matter where they were seen, from the freezing Arctic to the tropical South Pacific. They were considered one species, one identity. Their global consistency became part of the myth, a super predator capable of adapting to any ocean and hunting anything in it. But somewhere along the Pacific coastlines, from Alaska to California, that categorization began to crack. The shift wasn't sudden. It wasn't one dramatic moment of discovery. Instead, it came from a slow accumulation of questions that science could no longer shrug off. Why were some orcas silent hunters while others filled the sea with their clicks and calls? Why did certain pods stick to fish even when starving while others hunted seals and whales with terrifying precision? And most intriguingly, why had there never been a single case of interbreeding between two groups even when their territories overlapped for centuries? By 2024, the weight of decades of observation, data, and DNA analysis tipped the scales. Leading marine biologists began pushing for a radical rethinking that the orcas we'd been calling transients weren't just a quirky offshoot or regional variation. They were, in all likelihood, a completely different species. Now that the blindfold's off, the next question hits even harder. What exactly makes these orcas so different that they may no longer belong under the same name? What have they been doing all this time to carve out a genetic and behavioral identity of their own, not a different pod, but a different species? Imagine watching a group of orcas gliding through the sea. At a glance, nothing feels off. Their movement is familiar. Their coloration identical. If you didn't know better, you'd assume you were watching the same kind of animal that appears in every nature documentary. But spend time with them, follow their patterns, study their prey, listen for their voices and something begins to feel off. Not subtly different, but fundamentally alien. These orcas are known as transients, though that label now feels misleading. It implies they're just wanderers, social outliers, or nomadic fishers. But that couldn't be further from the truth. These orcas aren't simply doing things differently. They're wired differently, physically, behaviorally, ecologically. Let's start with how they hunt. While other orcas, particularly residents, rely on echolocation to find fish, transients remain eerily silent. They don't broadcast their position with clicks or chirps. They listen. They stalk. They drift through the water like phantoms, waiting for the right moment to strike. It's a strategy built for stealth because their prey isn't passive. It hears, it evades, and it fights back. These orcas are after sea lions, porpoises, seals, even young whales, creatures with sharp senses and sharp teeth the kind of prey that demands intelligence, coordination, and raw power. To support this hunting lifestyle, their bodies have followed suit. Transients tend to be slightly longer and more robust than residents. Their jaws are bulkier, adapted for gripping and tearing. Their teeth, flatter and more worn, tell the story of a lifetime spent crunching bone and thick hide, not soft, slick fish. Even their dorsal fins lean more sharply. Rather than sprawling extended families, Transient orcas travel in smaller, tightly bonded units, often a mother and her offspring. These pods are agile and efficient, suited to the strategic coordination needed for high-stakes mammal hunting. If residents are community choirs, transients are silent strike teams. What's emerging here isn't just variation, it's specialization. Transient whales overall are very quiet compared to the residents. When they are foraging, they're usually completely silent. And the deeper scientists looked, the more the question shifted from why are they so different to how long have they been this different? The answer, as it turns out, lies buried in their genes, and it's older than anyone expected. Sometimes 
the clearest truths are buried in code. And in the case of orcas, it was the double helix that finally laid bare what appearances could not. Genetic testing didn't just confirm that transients and residents were different, it revealed they were anciently different. The numbers don't lie. A divergence of approximately 300 zero years. That's longer than modern humans have walked the Earth. Back then, continents looked mostly the same, but the creatures moving across and through them did not. And while our early ancestors were just beginning to make stone tools, these orcas had already split into two lineages, evolving apart across time, diet, geography, and behavior. It's important to understand what a separation like that really means. These aren't just orcas who grew up in different neighborhoods with different tastes in food. This is deep evolutionary isolation. Despite overlapping in territory, sometimes swimming in the same coastal waters, transients and residents have never interbred not once. That's not just unusual, it's nearly unheard of in marine mammals who share so much ecological space. Researchers with the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration have long been searching for this species, dubbed Type D killer whale. Alicia's been looking for it too. In evolutionary biology, this kind of reproductive isolation is a key marker of speciation. If two groups live in the same environment but cannot or will not reproduce, something profound has occurred. It's no longer a case of cultural drift, it's genetic disconnection, and the differences don't stop at breeding behavior. Genomic data shows variations in immune systems, mitochondrial DNA, and neurological development. Even the orca's acoustic signatures are genetically ingrained. The way they listen, the way they interpret sound, it all maps back to their divergence. These are not orcas who could someday reunite. These are orcas who have become strangers. So now, with biology pointing in one direction and behavior in another, we find ourselves staring at a clear truth. We've been mislabeling an entire species for centuries. That answer lies in how we see, or more accurately, how we fail to see what's hiding in plain sight. It's one of the most humbling realizations in all of science. Just because something is familiar doesn't mean we understand it. And when it comes to orcas, familiarity may have been our biggest blindfold. For decades, scientists had all the evidence right in front of them. Behavioral differences, acoustic distinctions, dietary rigidity, even clear social structures. Yet all of it was brushed aside as ecotypic variation, minor adaptations within a species. It was easier to believe that orcas were incredibly flexible than to admit we might have been wrong about their very identity. After all, how could a new species be hiding in the most filmed, studied, and adored marine mammal on the planet? But therein lies the trap. The more an animal becomes an icon, a symbol of intelligence, playfulness, and raw power, the more we assume we already know it. And so, subtle signals go unnoticed. When an orca refuses to vocalize, we call it shyness. When it avoids others, we say it's an outlier. When its teeth wear differently, we chalk it up to diet, not speciation. We didn't lack the tools to spot the difference. We lacked the willingness to believe that such a difference could exist right under our noses. Compounding that was taxonomy's own rigidity. For centuries, species classification was built on morphology, the study of physical form. And by that metric, orcas are surprisingly uniform. But behavior, culture, and communication, these are the new frontiers and they don't always leave fossilized proof. What finally tipped the scales was the consistency of the evidence. Across decades of data collection, a pattern emerged too robust to ignore. These weren't merely alternative lifestyles within one species, they were two worlds coexisting in the same sea, speaking different languages, raising their young with different rules, and evolving along divergent tracks. Now that the veil is lifting, the full scope of the difference is coming into focus. And at the heart of it all is a way of life, a culture unlike anything we ever imagined or truly understood. Which is where we go next into the sharp, calculated, and astonishing world of the mammal hunters. To understand the true nature of these newly distinguished orcas, you have to study how they hunt. Because in their world, every decision is a matter of life, death, and strategy. These aren't fish chasers echoing through reefs, these are precision mammal hunters and their methods reveal just how far they've evolved from their fish-eating cousins. Transient orcas don't announce themselves, they navigate in total silence, avoiding echolocation entirely. 
While their cousins use sound as a navigational tool, transients treat it like a liability. The marine mammals they target seals, porpoises, sea lions, even small whales have evolved sharp auditory defenses. A single click could give away a hunt, so the transients rely on passive listening and stealth gliding silently just beneath the surface until they're ready to strike. Their bodies have adapted to support this ruthless efficiency. Their jaws are larger and more muscular, their teeth noticeably blunted from the constant grinding of bone and cartilage. Compared to residents, their skulls are shaped to deliver more crushing power. These aren't opportunistic feeders, they're purpose-built predators. The prey they go after is fast, agile, and often dangerous, meaning a single mistake can lead to injury or death. These orcas don't just overpower their targets, they outwit them. They also hunt in small, tightly coordinated units, typically three to seven individuals, often all related. This compact pod size makes communication easier and movements more synchronized. When attacking, they use strategies that feel almost choreographed. Some serve as decoys, drawing the prey into shallow water while others circle and flank. Once the time is right, a single blow from a tail or a carefully positioned bite ends the chase. It's violent, yes, but it's also astonishingly intelligent. There's no panic in these hunts, no chaos, just calculation. It's not enough to be fast or strong. Transients succeed because they study their prey, plan ahead, and adapt in real time. And the more we observe them, the more it becomes clear that we're witnessing not just evolved behavior but something more nuanced something cultural, 